I use the pronouns she and her, and I'm queer identified. Everyone born with a vulva is a girl. True or false? Or identifies as a girl. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like I'm dressed for a wedding or something. Listen up, kids and parents. It's time to stop learning about your ABCs and your one, two, threes, and get into learning about your LGBTs. Actually, hold on. It's the LGBTQQ2, yeah, the number, SA pluses. That. All right, guys, so today we are reacting, responding to this video that. It's just dreadful and I don't think I've ever even used that adjective to describe anything but I can't that's what came out of my mouth sure we may not even be able to agree on a f***ing acronym but we're definitely still gonna teach your kids everything there is to know or everything we make up every other month okay it's a video about LGBT and sex education for kids and girl or boy or whoever you are watching this you'll see it's awful because of course, right now it's all the rage to teach kids as young as five everything there is to know about LGBT. It's interesting how all this new wave of teaching kids about being gay and trans and bi, etc., is actually doing the opposite of what it should be. Acceptance of LGBT people among the younger generation is actually going down for the first time in a very long time. So let's just get to reacting, shall we? You can get these stickers in my merch store, by the way. Hi, I'm a facelift. I use the pronouns she and her and I'm queer identified. Okay, so a little bit of tea for you guys. This drag queen in the orange hair actually was in a previous video of mine and uh, they threatened to sue me for talking about them. So we'll see if they threaten to sue again, but try me bitch. And I am Fluffy Souffle. I use they, them, because I'm a non-binary performer. Of course you are. What are some other sexuality terms that people identify as? Asexual. Asexual, yeah, yeah. and that means that it's somebody that might have romantic interests, but they don't have sex, they generally. Any others? Gay. Gay, totally. Mm -hmm. Lesbian? Yes, mm -hmm. lesbian for sure. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Nobody's mentioned straight. Straight. <laughs> straight. Nobody's mentioned straight. Straight. <laughs> straight. Nobody's mentioned straight. <laughs> straight people. Oh my God, it's so 1990s. Okay, I forgot to say in the video that it's so crazy how these kids are being taught about all this non-binary, you know, genderqueer, all this, but what they really need to be learning and be teaching in school is financial planning. I didn't use any of the advanced math theories they taught me in life, honey, as an adult. However, they had no problem sending me on my weary way into adulthood knowing nothing about taxes, investing, properties, mortgages. Girl, teach me how to survive. Anyways, bye. Yeah. If you were a girl when uh, like you're little, how did you like change to become like a boy? Uh, uh... I'm sorry, but if a little kid asked me a question like that, I would respond pretty much exactly like this. You'll learn when you're older, little boy. Don't ask me questions like that. It doesn't concern you. Don't worry about it. Don't concern yourself with it. Go play hopscotch. Do whatever the hell y'all do. So, like, do you have male or female parts? Um, I'm sure a lot of people ask, or a lot of people are wondering that. Uh, for me personally, I have had top surgery, which means that uh, I had the technical term is a double mastectomy. So I did have my breasts removed. So I have scars here on my chest. And then I really only talk about kind of what's in my pants um, if people are getting in there. It's just so uncomfortable. Even in like the most progressive like sex ed class, I live in California, okay? And when I got sex ed as a kid, you know, I did go through that class. You don't ask the instructor about their genitals and like it's not even really the kid's fault. It's the fact that this environment was placed there that makes that an acceptable question. That they brought in some guy with pink hair who is probably not an expert in anything, just as some, some trans guy. These body parts did not work for my body and everybody is gonna find out who they are in different ways, whether that's surgery, whether that's hormones, or whether it's nothing at all. Okay, so first of all, I have a bit of an issue with teaching kids who there is about a 99.999% chance that none of the kids in that room are trans, that like surgery and altering your body is the answer to bodily insecurities or being uncomfortable with certain body parts because 
I'm looking at these young girls in this class and I know that young girls go through so much in terms of body image. And it seems like a very toxic message to be up there standing amongst these kids saying that we all have a different journey, whether it's altering our bodies through surgery or through hormones. These young girls probably think about surgeries to fix. Maybe they're insecure about their nose or their weight or whatever. It, a completely different message gets conveyed to them. Yes, a lot of trans people do get surgery for gender dysphoria, but of course he never mentioned gender dysphoria at all because they never like to admit that there is a medical condition that goes along with being trans ever. So when you don't make that distinction that's for a specific diagnosis that sometimes the treatment is surgery, you're then telling these young kids, if you're uncomfortable with your body, surgery is the answer. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nadine, a sex educator. And I'm Eva, a sex researcher. I use the pronouns she and her. Never would have guessed. Thanks for letting me know. Today we have our dolls, Ginger and Blue. They are gender flexible today, so you can use any pronoun you want for them. They're dolls, sweetie. True or false? There's no right or wrong age to fall in love. This is true. People fall in love at all different kinds of ages. Okay, I'm not trying to attribute any sort of like, you know, ill will on the part of the instructors here, but I would have liked maybe a clarification that I guess you can technically fall in love at any age, but there is a certain age window that is appropriate for them to fall in love with and for people to fall in love with them. I feel like telling kids just blanket, like, you can fall in love at any age. Like, to me just as someone who is maybe more in tune with like predators than most people because I tend to cover a lot on my channel I would not tell a kid that personally that just reeks of like yes an adult can fall in love with you and maybe I'm looking too deep into that but that was just my initial reaction to them saying that and them just moving past it okay can I go off now let's okay let's go off let's go okay so I do not think there's anything inherently wrong with, at a certain point, obviously, you know, if a kid asks a question, maybe they see two men holding hands in the grocery store aisle, maybe they see someone who looks like they may have been born a boy, but they're actually presenting as a girl, you know, kids spot that kind of stuff, kids are not dumb, I'm not sitting here saying, we have to shield the kids from everything that is to do with LGBT, absolutely not, but there's a certain way to go about it, in my opinion, that is appropriate, and that is, you know, when and if I have children in the future, when they start to ask questions about gay people or whatever, I will say, little Timmy, little Dorothy, that man is holding hands with that man because some men fall in love with other men and women with other women, and that's that. Nothing more, nothing less. That is, <laughs> that is normal. But going into this non-binary, genderqueer, I'm a boy today, I'm a girl tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. It's all just, it, it comes across as indoctrination. It comes across as inappropriate. And I don't think anyone or anything benefits from this being taught to young kids in school. And to anyone who disagrees with me, I pose this question, answer it in the comments. If the purpose is to increase acceptance of LGBT people among young people and therefore raise a generation that is more kind and more accepting, which I personally am for, obviously, then why is it that as we're at the peak of LGBT education and teaching young kids about it and, you know, complete saturation in the media everyone's talking about it all the time that simultaneously acceptance among young people for the first time in a long time is going down for LGBT people that to me is a problem what that reads to me is this is a backlash this is a reaction to the oversaturation of LGBT stuff being in the media constantly and the forcing things on kids that is happening now within LGBT discourse in my opinion, LGBT activists who honestly most of the time do not speak for the average LGBT person are creating their own backlash by doing this type of stuff, which is not good for the average LGBT person who has to deal with the ramifications of that backlash, which is now acceptance is going down for the first time. Like, really? All right, guys. That is it for this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not. Hit the bell to be notified of every single video. I'd love to see you in every new video with me. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I do post daily. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.